Hello everyone, my name is Dakoba and welcome back to Satisfactory. Today we're looking at coal power, a critical task for transitioning into the mid game and breaking out of the shackles of biomass early on. Now we are going to look at how to set up a basic coal power plant and then we're going to explore a few different designs that modify this idea to create the perfect plant for your power needs and build style. Let's get into it. Our first design is great for your first coal power plant as you transition off biomass at the beginning of phase three. It uses four coal generators and two water extractors to provide 300 megawatts of power and consume 60 units of coal per minute, meaning it can be supplied by a single Mark I miner on a normal coal node. The design is also tileable and can be repeated or extended to scale to satisfy any power needs that you have, as long as you have the coal and water to supply it. It should be built atop or very near water to avoid any issues with fluid and pipe mechanics, and also near coal to make it easy to supply the necessary fuel, but there are suitable build locations near every starting area in the game and countless other places around the map as well. We're gonna start by placing a three x five foundation platform in the water. Next, we'll use a wall to create a raised four x five foundation grid overlapping this, but leaving one row of the lower foundations uncovered. This is where we're gonna run our water pipes to supply our generators. On our upper platform, we can place four coal generators, ensuring that the inputs to the generators face the exposed platforms from the lower level. In front of the generators, we can then place our water extractors. It may be helpful to place temporary foundations along one side and build a lookout tower, which will provide a convenient snap point to make it easier to place the water extractors. It's also a good idea to set them back from the foundations by a few meters to make it a little bit simpler to run pipes neatly, but this isn't strictly necessary. Once the extractors are in place, run a pipeline along the length of the foundation platform. Once it's built, place pipeline junction crosses in front of all of the inputs on each generator, as well as the outputs on both extractors for a total of six. At this point, you can connect the pipes up to your buildings. To provide fuel for the generators, place conveyor lifts on the solid inputs of each generator facing underneath and behind the generators into the space between the platforms. This is where we can run our supply line of coal into a splitter manifold to provide coal to each of the generators. Once logistics are in place, ensure power lines are connected to each building as well as the miner providing the coal, and connect power to jump to and connect power to jumpstart the system. Two local biomass burners is enough to get the system up and running, and once the first generator kicks on, the system should be fully self-sustaining and provide 300 megawatts of power, or 267.6 megawatts after you account for the power draw of the water extractors and the miner. As a final step, adjust the tuning speed on the two water extractors to 75%. Each generator consumes 45 units of water per minute for a total of 180 in the plant, while the water extractors can provide 120 each, 240 in total. Therefore, we need to reduce how much they're producing by 25%. It's most efficient to reduce each extractor to 75% speed to reduce their power draw while still providing enough water to run the generators, instead of leaving one at 100 and setting the other to 50. Now, if you want to double this design to use 120 coal and generate 600 megawatts of power, you can simply extend the platform and build more generators and extractors. If you have eight generators, you might notice that you only need three water extractors to provide for them at 100% efficiency. So you can reduce your space and material costs by a bit and eliminate one of the extractors in that design. On the other hand, maintaining the one to two ratio between extractors and generators creates a satisfying symmetry and it's a bit more power efficient to boot. Four extractors at 75% clock speed will consume 54.8 megawatts of power compared to 60 megawatts of power used by three extractors at 100% speed. Now this isn't very much, but it's enough to run the miner in the setup and also to make sure that you can jumpstart the full plant off of just two biomass burners if you need to do that. 
However you decide to build it, this is a time-tested design that will continue to work well for years, but there are some ways we can play with it to make it look a little bit nicer or fit a wider variety of uses. All right, now to, to move away from this basic design, there are some ways we can improve it or tweak it to make it suit uh, a different variety of settings. One of those is to place the coal generators above the water extractors as we've done here. And in this case, I've also placed the coal generators inside of a building. If you're gonna do that, it is polite to make sure the smokestacks are not enclosed in the building as well and that they do stick out the roof. Now this creates a smaller footprint. We can uh, uh, create this uh, more pleasing vertical design and place this into a smaller area or a smaller lake. Anywhere that you have sufficient water, you can go ahead and build this, build this design and then provide the coal with whatever logistic systems you like. Now when you're doing this design, it is important to understand how head lift works in the game. And head lift is the amount of vertical power that each sort of pumping structure has to move fluids upward through a pipe. So if we look at the water extractors in the uh, build menu, you can see that they provide 10 meters of head lift. And this is where things get a little interesting. 10 meters is only about two and a half foundations. So that would be uh, right about here on this, uh, on this uh, column here. But you can see that I'm not using any pumps and the water is able to flow into the generators just fine. So I'm not sure if the tool tip is wrong or if the water extractors aren't working quite as intended. Uh, but normally to resolve head lift, you will need to place pipeline pumps, which uh, do draw con power constantly, but they have an indicator that shows how sort of how far uh, up the pipeline that they will go. And then those just need to be connected up to power in order to... to uh, to provide the necessary head lift. Again, though, in this case, uh, it seems that the generator or the water extractors are providing sufficient head lift without that. I'm not sure what's going on there, but the design does work without the pumps uh, at, at, as of the time of this recording. Now there is another technique for generating the necessary head lift, and that is to use a water tower. Uh, and we'll take a look at that in our next plant design. All right, our final design is a 3600 megawatt power plant, which is a huge plant for coal produ production and is probably going to be enough to last you well into the mid game until you can get fuel or turbo fuel set up without needing to build additional coal infrastructure anywhere else. And it may, if you're stingy with your power, last you even longer than that. Now, in this case, we have uh, three banks with 16 generators apiece, and they are being provided by a vehicle-based logistics system. So out in the jungle, we're mining the coal and loading it onto uh, some truck station, loading it onto some tractors at some truck stations. And then those tractors drive up and bring the coal around to three different truck stations within the power plant, each providing for one wing of the plant. Logistics are handled in two logistics layers underneath the bottom deck of generators, one of those for water and the other for coal distribution. And then they're being sent up into the generator banks using vertical lifts and vertical pipelines, and that is true on both the front and the back side. Now, as far as water goes, we're using four extractors for each set of eight generators, uh, and that's providing plenty of water. Uh, and the savings when you scale it up like this, instead of uh, just being five megawatts of savings, it's 40 megawatts of savings. So about half a generator's worth of saving by doing that. Uh, and it did cost us an additional eight water extractors. Uh, so so again, that's a, a, a choice. But again, I like the, uh, the symmetry of using one extractor for two generators. Now, all of the head lift for this entire plant is being provided by a single water tower over here on the right. And how this works is that all of the water in the entire system, in the entire plant, is a single pipe network. There are all, all the pipes from all three wings are connected together. And so if we head down underneath, we can see that every generator or every water extractor is feeding into the same pipe network, and those are connected between the different wings as well. And so every Water extractor and every generator are all connected together. This means they're all part of the same pipe network. Now, how head lift within a network works, or one, one trick of this, is that uh, if water is already at a certain height within the network, then uh, head lift is sort of ignored when determining if water can get there. So what, what I did was, before I turned on the generators, I set up these two pumps and allowed them to fill this water, the storage tank at the top of the, uh, the water tower. And as long as the storage tank doesn't run out, as long as we're providing enough water uh, and even overproducing a little bit, then we don't need to worry about additional head lift or additional pumps. Now this uh, may be a little bit of a trick of game mechanics. It may not be 
working exactly how the game designers intended for it to work. So you can choose whether you want to exploit that uh, for your own designs or not. But it is a useful trick, and there are even more simplistic designs than this if you uh, care to look into those. One of them is just a just a vertical pipe. You don't even need a tank or flowing back in, although I found this to be uh, much more stable and survive updates. I've been using this design since about update five or six. So uh, it certainly works, and you're certainly uh, capable of doing it. You can see that even here in Satisfactory 1.0, it is still functioning as intended, and the plant is continuing to operate just fine without any of the additional pumps. All right, here's another design for a coal power plant. This one is actually powered by petroleum coke being produced by an oil refinery. Uh, but the important thing to note here is that it still works exactly the same. The ratios are a little bit different depending on your fuel type, whether you're using coal, petroleum coke, or compacted coal. Uh, but in this case, I want to highlight the use of conveyor lifts and scaffolding to bring the materials in over a road and over a thoroughfare. Uh, I find that when you travel along a pathway, seeing the conveyor belts moving above and in front of you uh, does a lot to bring the world of the factory to life and so I really like this design uh, for that reason. All right here's another design for a coal power plant. This one also uses a water tower to provide head lift uh, and the water extractors are located within the structure underneath. This one I wanted to uh, sort of bridge the gap between the two uh, landscape structures on either side and also create a large impressive structure within the world. But otherwise the plant is more or less laid out the same way we have seen some previous ones. I think I had taken some some of the coal that I was providing for this plant and redirected it elsewhere. Uh, so it's no longer fully being supplied. But uh, uh, again, you can, you can structure the uh, inputs and outputs on these plants any way you like. It looks like the landscape may have changed to some since this was built as well. And that's going to do it for today. I hope you have found this guide to coal power in Satisfactory helpful. Leave a like if you have and subscribe if you'd like to see more. My name is Dakoba and I hope you have an efficient day. I'll see you soon.